Hey everybody, this is Sally. I just wanted to make a quick video um, to share with you something that's happening in my life right now. Um, you're also very supportive and I'm just asking you to uh, lift your hearts in, in prayer for my family. My, my mother-in-law is almost 94. She has lived near us for five years. Five years ago she fell and had a few issues and so we brought her from her home in Memphis to live near us in Northern Virginia. And um, she was in an independent living apartment that I that is HUD subsidized, so it was very affordable to live in. It was a beautiful apartment complex. I actually used to work there at the front desk as a receptionist. Can you imagine? And uh, anyway, uh, in the last week, things have really shifted. She had a mini stroke. It's called a TIA on Friday, last Friday, and um, and my husband is her only child. So. Um, spent the weekend over there husband did I did all kinds of food prep thinking you know I get the food organized and everything for her for the weeks ahead and and then she was pretty good over the weekend with him but then he left he had a class he had to go to this week and he couldn't miss it and we thought things were back on track for normalcy and uh, so anyway he's not able to be home until Friday midday and yesterday was a meltdown day yesterday I went and bought my dress for Vegas had a wonderful morning, went over to check on, see if everything was squared away, and she was not good. Had a fever. Hospice nurse came over. So we'd already engaged hospice about a month ago for extra help. Somebody said, you know, you should call hospice because they do palliative care. Anybody out there who has an aging parent who, you know, even if they don't have a specific condition, if they're very elderly, they are pretty much, you know, passing on sometimes. And if they meet the criteria when they interview and check them, then they, you get all kinds of help. You get nurses' visits, and you get cleaning person, and you get a bath, and it's wonderful. So we engaged them about a month ago just to get extra help. And they've been extremely helpful, identifying transitional things in her life, things changes. And so suddenly, here we is. This, yesterday afternoon, I heard, no, it's not going to be good. And so I had to deal with all kinds of equipment I had to learn to use, and my head exploded, and I couldn't function, and I went home in tears for to sleep and had some ladies staying with her. Um, and this morning I went in about 5 and started her meds again, um, which have to be every 3 hours. And um, it turned out that she is really transitioning to the end. I mean, she's not drinking, she's not eating, she's not getting out of the bed to go to the bathroom. I mean, it's it's the bed bound thing, but it's going to be pretty quick. Uh, she's um, she's on some morphine and some lorazepam drops and a nebulizer for her breathing, but just wanted to let you guys know that it it's a privilege to be with someone. It's hard. It's not easy. And I have been there when other people I know have passed. My mom died of lung cancer. She had a hospice. Um, although my sister did most of her care, I certainly did. We were there and we loved on her and rubbed her body with lotion and kissed her and told her what a good mom she was and um, it's hard. I lost my very best friend last year, year before last, to ovarian cancer and that was really hard too. So I just want to say if you've not been through a death experience in your family or someone close to you, it isn't easy but I encourage you, just like I've encouraged you on your journeys, to be in tune with what's going on, to, to know yourself. Don't be afraid of death. Don't be afraid of the dying process. It is such a privilege. It is a sacred privilege to attend someone uh, on their last journey. And that's what we are. We're attendants. We are there to help, to ease pain, to serve, to encourage them, to find peace, to be relaxed, to be, you know, to, to, to go ahead and go. I mean, and you can be there and you can do things from playing soft music. You can, you can sit by their bed and pray. You can read scripture. You can just sing to them. Um, eventually they will go into a state where they won't really hear you. I mean, they'll hear you, but they won't respond. Just don't want you to be afraid. It's such a privilege. I can't even explain it until you've been through it the first time. What a privilege it really is to help them cross over to their new life. You know, just like we have new lives in our new bodies. 
I really have to believe, I need to believe in life everlasting. And everybody has different sets of beliefs, and I understand that. And my heart's actually been broken by my, one of my own children who's decided not to believe in anything, and that really broke my heart. Um, I have a friend who I thought the world of, and he doesn't believe in heaven. He doesn't believe in anything. And that always grieves me so much, because I guess I need to believe. Even if it all ends up being fake, even if it's all a big, you know, um, con on the other side, there's nothing there. I, I don't care. I don't care. I need to believe. It's how I'm wired. And I just want to encourage you to not be afraid to embrace this process as a natural part of living. The death is a journey, just like the birth. Um, everything's a journey. So I, I just wanted to encourage you not to be afraid to, when that thing happens in your life, when you find yourself in those places, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You'll find the strength. You'll find um, what you need if you just ask. And you'll see a whole other side of living that you never knew. And it can be a very rich experience and something you will share again and again with other people. And then eventually we'll have our own journey out. So I just wanted to share that's what's going on with me. Um, I'm not sure what's happening about Vegas. I shouldn't even say the word Vegas. I told someone, I said, every time I bring it up, I feel like I'm going to Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, because I'm saying my mother-in-law's on her deathbed and I'm going to dump my husband and go to Vegas. You know, it sounds awful. I know how it sounds. It sounds awful to me. But there's a part of me that just really wants to be, I want to be there. And my husband's okay with it. So I'm just telling people I have a meeting in Nevada. <laughs> I'm okay. I just needed to talk to y'all. And um, I... I know I look horrible. I'm sorry. It's been a long couple of days. It's going to be a long few more. But um, as Wendy says, onward. You know, onward. You guys take care and um, hug the people you love today. Tell them you love them because you don't know. And, um, and just be blessed. Bye, guys. I don't get much internet access right now because over there there isn't any. And so I'm kind of stuck for the couple hours I get to swing home. And really, YouTube and Facebook shouldn't be my top priority. The dog having to go outside needs to be my top priority. And that's what I do. But I still need a shower and some lentils. So I better go. Keep it real. See you later.